Hey, Wealthlab 7 users, Glitch here. Today we are going to talk about really not so much what's new in Wealthlab 7 Build 50, uh, although that is our latest release. Build 50 mainly contains uh, numerous minor fixes, uh, but the main thing that we're going to cover today is much more important news the development effort of Wealthlab 8. So, yep, that's right. Uh, about a week ago, I found myself creating a new solution in Visual Studio named Wealth Lab 8. Uh, I just felt it was time to start migrating this product to a new version. Uh, there's a couple reasons why we're doing this at this point, and I'm, I'm gonna get into that in a bit, but uh, first of all, I don't want anyone to worry uh, because Wealth Lab 8 will be largely compatible with Wealth Lab 7. There'll be a few minor differences, uh, but if you would quantify the leap from Wealth Lab 6 to Wealth Lab 7 on a difficulty scale of 1 to 10, that was probably a 9, whereas 7 to 8 will be more of a 1. And we also plan on releasing automated migration tools. The licensing of the product will remain the same. Nothing is changing with that. So your WealthLab 7 license will continue to work with WealthLab 8. And you can actually still run them side by side. So you can take your time to migrate over as you see fit. There's going to be no hurry. So that's the big news. WealthLab 8 is under development. And Let's take a look at a couple of reasons why that WealthLab 7, believe it or not, has been around for about a year. And let's take a quick look at our wish list here. During that year, we have completed 195 feature requests. There are currently 75 still open, so we have done a ton of listening to the user base and Impl in implementing what is asked for by our users. So that's going to continue. This tradition will continue with Wealth Lab 8, although you may not see another update for maybe a couple months until the Wealth Lab 8 migration is complete and we can release it. So, what are the main goals of Wealth Lab 8? Why are we doing this? Number one, moving to .NET 6. So as you are well aware, Wealth Lab 7 is built on the .NET Core Framework 3.1. Microsoft is at version 6, so we want to maintain the cutting edge and get up to speed with the latest version of the framework. So Wealth Lab 8 is being built from the ground up in .NET 6. That is the first major goal. Second is one of the things that we had to decline in the wish list because doing it in WealthLab 7 would have been much too tedious and problematic. It's really something that needs to be done from the ground up, and that is theming. So let's say here we have our WealthLab 8 kind of prototype uh, on display here. I'm opening up a chart, and you'll notice this new theme. On, menu and voila we have a dark theme for wealth lab 8 a much requested feature and we're happy to put that into the wealth lab 8 code base from the ground up so there we go we have theming number 3 wealth lab 8's core library will be cross platform currently the WealthLab Core library is targeted to Windows. It uses Windows-specific things like the color class from Windows GDI, the font class, several other things in WPF are referenced in the WealthLab 7 Core library. This is changing, and it has changed now for WealthLab 8. The WealthLab 8 Core library is now one assembly instead of a collection of WealthLab Core, WealthLab Backtest, uh, WealthLab Data. Everything is in one assembly, although we're preserving the namespaces. So your code should move over with 
minimal to no effort. Uh, but since everything will now be in one class library, it's much easier to reference things. We don't run into things with circular references with these libraries, like, like uh, I used to run into occasionally and needed to create some kind of clunky workarounds, like some extension methods and things like that. Everything is nicely now in one WealthLab core class library, and that library does not reference Windows. It does not reference system.drawing GDI. It does not reference WPF. That means we have our own WL color class that's cross-platform. We have our own WL font. Uh, and that also means that this core library can in the future be used as the basis for perhaps a Mac version of WealthLab, which is impossible to do right now. Now the UI framework of WealthLab 8 is still WPF because that's what we're proficient in, and that is Windows specific. I mean, the W in WPF is Windows. So WealthLab 8 is still targeting Windows. However, this opens the door for cross-platform versions. Number four, we are unifying a lot of the core classes in WealthLab 8, specifically these factory classes that, that we never really documented much, but play a major role in the extensibility of WealthLab. Basically, anything that's extendable in this framework has a factory class that where you can discover the instances of an object that are available and create instances. For example, chart styles. Here we have this dropdown of our chart styles in the core module. These are extendable. As you know, other extensions install new chart styles, pointed figure, Renko, Kagi, line break, uh, the list goes on. And there is a chart style factory. So in the WealthLab 7 framework, all of these factories were handcrafted. Now I developed a base class, factory base, uh, which is a generic class. It takes a type, as all generic classes do. So you can now create a factory based on an extendable type very easily in WealthLab 8, and they all share the same basic framework, the same basic methods. So it'll be easier to use these factories. Once you learn one of them, all of the other ones will come naturally and will also be easier for us to document them. Number five, we are simplifying the storage mechanism for things like data sets and strategies. Uh, in the wish list, we had to decline a request to store these in XML format instead of the custom non-human readable format that we currently use. Now that we're kind of moving things from the ground up, we can listen to what the users want and store them in XML format, which is what we are doing in WealthLab 8. Number six is an easier way to document the framework. Uh, we have a quick ref a concept where all of the classes and methods and example code are all stored in this big XML document, which can be extended through extensions, but it's a little bit, you know, difficult to do. We have a, a quick ref editor that we need to use to create these entries, and it gets pretty tedious. All of that is being simplified. Each class's documentation will be in a single markdown file, which is readable in and of itself, but will also be parsed by our quick ref manager to populate the quick ref here. So here we have just one example of the bar history class. This is still under development. This will get cleaned up uh, right now. It's not rendering the markdown uh, in this area, so that will undergo some more work, but it will be much easier to document our classes for WealthLab 8, for the website online reference, framework reference, and for extension developers who want to document their classes for seamless integration in our QuickRef. So 
that's it for now, guys. Uh, Wealth Lab 8 is underway. I'm working probably one and a half times harder than I have been over the past year, which I didn't think was possible, but uh, it is happening. But don't let this prevent you from ordering Wealth Lab 7 now because the license carries over. Uh, you might as well get familiar with Wealth Lab 7 because the transition to Wealth Lab 8 will be extremely easy. So thanks everybody. And let's talk about this on the forum. Give me your ideas and other thoughts about what we should do with Wealth Lab 8. See you there.